Try that again. And all the congregation said? I'll take all the above. All right. It's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, if you would, with, turn with me to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. All right. And then let's look at verse number 5. Romans 14. Verse number 5, the Bible reads, One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. I draw your attention to this particular verse this morning as we have entered into Christmas time. If you have not noticed the lights everywhere and the decorations, and I've just got the list of the, the songs for this morning, and yes, we're singing Christmas hymns. So it, it is upon us. There's no going back. There's nothing you can do to avoid it. This is somewhat of a controversial time as the ungodly Christ-hating world is doing everything they can to keep Christ out of Christmas. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have Christians who are trying to Christianize something that's really more of a secular holiday today, the Christmas time. In verse number five, I want you to see this. One man, so that's an individual. It says, esteemeth. To esteem something means how you count it in value, what your perspective is. One man esteemeth one day above another. Some people like Mondays, some people hate Mondays. We could take that verse to mean that in the simplest form. Some people love their birthday. Other people, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, try to pretend it never happened, right? <laughs> Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Now this is interesting. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Uh, I want to make sure that we're in balance as Christians, especially during Christmas time. And I want to ask you this question, is your Christmas Antichrist? I know that's a controversial title. I believe it is a controversial subject at this time of the year. Let me tell you, Jesus is God and he is the true source of all of our joy. And we ought to esteem every day alike for the Lord Jesus Christ and be thankful to Him for everything that He's given us. And there's a little bit of a conspiracy behind the origins of Christmas, and yet, does that mean that we have to be Christmas correctors? I'll tell you a personal story. Years ago, I discovered some of the secret origins of some of the Christmas traditions, and it just rubbed me wrong. And I I was a single man at that time, and I did a television show kind of exposing uh, the darkness, and uh, it was an awesome ministry I was able to take part of. But I'll be honest with you, I was a little out of balance for a season. I became a Christmas corrector, and I felt it was my job to go around and shake my finger at everybody that celebrated Christmas different than me. I came to despise Christmas, generally speaking, because of the problems with it, the greed and the corporate influence on it. And, you know, just trying to get you to become a debt slave in December and you'll regret it by February, you know. And I just saw the problems with it, how it was commercialized. And really it leaves everybody empty. Right after December the 25th, there's this big anticipation and we're hoping for something. You open all your presents and then it's like, now what? Well, I didn't get what I wanted and I don't even know if I'll use what I got and... Sometimes Christmas leaves us more depressed when it's finished. And I want to talk about it from a Christian biblical perspective, how we should be. Because I'll tell you, uh, what we're reading here in Romans 14 tells us that we should let somebody else be fully persuaded in their mind. And that's okay how they think without us. Now look, if you're fully persuaded in your mind... Uh, and you feel like you're standing on a strong position, I don't want to take that from you, but what I want to make sure that we do is that we use this time of the year for what it has seasonally become. You know, it's a biblical tradition after the harvest to have a big feast, to reunite with families, 
Uh, God had certain feasts and festivals at this time of the year, and they would give portions to one another. They would leave gleanings for the poor. There are all sorts of neat things in the Bible that kind of, in a sense, correspond with what we have today as a secular Christmas time where people give gifts and they celebrate and they get together and have a warm dinner on a cold time. And, uh, and so, I mean, it's kind of interesting that there are some pictures in the Bible that we can relate to the season. However, we cannot deny Christmas is kind of where the Catholics tried to Christianize certain pagan traditions. However, that doesn't make every version of Christmas totally pagan. And what I'd like to do is present what I believe to be a balanced biblical view. This time of the year, December, at the end of the year, as we end 2023 and we prepare for 2024, let us have a spirit of joy and thankfulness. Let us remember that it is the Lord Jesus Christ that gives us everything we have, including the breath in our lungs. Let us glorify His name above all else and all that we do. Let us use this time of the year to encourage people and point them to Christ now more than ever. Let me share some things with you, and then let me share some balance. I have a problem with Santa Claus because I think he is the antithesis of Jesus Christ. They say it started from St. Nick, but that's not even a real person. There's three or four different legends they try to connect the dots with. Christmas is new. The word was invented about 200 years ago. Santa expects you to be good to earn a gift. Jesus says the gift is free. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God has a list. It's called the Book of Life. Santa has his own list, and he's checking it twice, and he's spying on you while you sleep. Santa is the antithesis of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is an antichrist in a sense because he's there instead of the Lord Jesus Christ. He watches you while you sleep. Well, I can thank God that, uh, what's it say of the children, their angel doth always stand before the face of a father. Man, thank God that he's looking down on us, and he cares for us and he loves us and only God is everywhere the Lord Jesus Christ is omnipresent he is everywhere Santa Santa is not the gift of God is eternal life it's because of Jesus that we have salvation that's the free gift it's not something we earn by good behavior those that teach salvation is by good behavior they don't understand the word gift they don't understand the word grace grace must be free Santa, we know he rides reindeer, but the Lord Jesus Christ will come back riding a white horse one day as he sets up his kingdom on earth. Some people will point to the Christmas tree and tell you that if you have one, you're a pagan. And I disagree with that, and I want to show you why. Um, there are things about Christmas that I, I think we should call into question. For instance, you've heard those, the, the secular world has these songs, the Yuletide Carol. You guys have heard those songs? The Yuletide was a time of debauchery and human sacrifice. It's a wicked origin. We don't use that term. It has nothing to do with Christianity. It's important for us to understand that. They would wait to the darkest day of the year and do some very sad, sadistic things. There's another tradition around the same time of the year where they would worship Saturn. They called it Saturnalia. And the Romans would shut down the courts for a few days. And it was a time that families typically left the area to save the lives of their children. Saturnalia was, a, again, a time of debauchery and perverseness, days of lawlessness, anything goes. Most families got out of the way because their partying turned into violence and murder and corruption. That was the time the courts were shut down. That's not the same as the Christmas break that we get this year. I have to tell you, though, with Christmas, we don't do a Mass. We never have. We never will. They say the word Mass comes from the crowd coming and going. There is a Mass that the Catholic rituals do where they bring up Jesus and kill Him again every service. That's wrong, and that's weird, and that is pagan. It's not based in biblical concepts. But that doesn't mean you can't use the word Christmas time. Elves are another one that we see this time of year. You'll see them... Uh, people put them on the side of the road. It's on all the advertising. Elves are some sort of an eternal hybrid humanoid race that has the power to make people sick. 
They're magical. They can do magic. They seduce people. There's weird history to where that came from. And frankly, as a, as a biblical Christian, I'm not interested in elves. I don't think I want anything like that in my house. Now, does that mean I have to correct anybody that uses an elf? I would tell you to use discernment on how, you, uh, how your spirit is and how you respond to Christmas things. This is the time of the year, more than any, that we can glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. The world wants a Christmas time where they don't say the name Christ. There's no manger. Now, we know Jesus wasn't born on December the 25th. It probably was September. The Bible doesn't specifically tell us to honor His birth, but it doesn't forbid it either. I don't think it's a wrong tradition to honor the Lord. As we just saw in verse 5, one man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. We shouldn't turn a blind eye to some of the paganism that is in Christmas, but what if I, I could draw you a spectrum? And let's take all of Christmas tradition and put it under one umbrella. And let's say on this side of the spectrum we have pagan, like debauchery, drunkenness, fornication, human sacrifice, worshiping other gods. And over here we had more Christianity, like we honor Jesus, we're thankful for the end of the year, that he'd given a, we've got another year coming, and he was born in a manger as a virgin. And then somewhere in the middle is where I believe 99% of the world is at, and it's just secular. It's just secular. I don't think that your coworker that's not saved, I don't believe that they do human sacrifices, nor would they um, condone such an action. So if you confront them and you say, you have a tree with lights on it, that's a human sacrifice. They'd say, man, this guy is crazy. They, you've lost your mind. What are you talking about? This is just a tradition. Our family has always done it. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. Isn't it a good thing to give gifts to one another and have family together? And hey, I like some of the lights. I do. It's kind of neat to have the warm lights and an inviting atmosphere and get the Christmas hymns going about Jesus. It's this time of the year that we do it. I don't see a problem with that. Personally, there are certain areas of Christmas where I feel like, I feel now that I know the truth, I'm not as excited about it. But yet, if you want to do some of that, I'm not going to condemn you, but I certainly am not condoning anything pagan. We are over here as Christians. There are pagans over here doing wicked things this time of year, and as they always have. But the majority of people, I think, are right here in the middle in what's called a secular tradition. If I said, do you have a tree? And you said, I do. And I said, why? And you said, well... Because my mom did, and I loved it when we were kids. Well, why did your mom do it? Well, because she did when she was a kid. That's not pagan. It's not necessarily Christian either. It's just secular. And what I want to do is give you a balanced view that as Christians, we can be okay with some secular things. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. He didn't call us out of the world, right? In fact, uh, how many of you, uh, of you here drive an automobile? Oh, you bunch of secular people. Unbelievable, right? Now, how many of you live in a house? How many of you have watched Fourth of July fireworks or uh, New Year's fireworks? Who's made a New Year's resolution? Who's given somebody a card for Valentine's Day? I think you under... Who has had a birthday cake? Well, then you're just a bunch of secular people. Well, I guess we're all secular. We're kind of in the world, right? And what I want to do is present this balanced view. I do think it's unfortunate that most Christians are not aware of some of the pagan origins and they're okay with the elf on the shelf and they think Santa is real and they want to teach their children, they lie to their children about Santa that you have to be good to get a present and when they find out they're disappointed it confuses them about Jesus who wants to give you the gift for free and He is everywhere and He loves you. So I think it's important to have a clear distinction and to draw the lines and it's also okay to say, well we do a tree. Because if I said if you have a tree, how many of you um, you know, give gifts. And some of you said, yeah, we give gifts. Okay. Is it because the, the wise men brought Jesus gifts? Well, maybe. Is it because Jesus gave us the gift? Well, maybe. Not really. Is it just tradition? Is it okay to have a secular tr tradition and still be spiritual and righteous and use this time to point people to the Lord? I want to be balanced in all things. I, I, it's important to rebuke folly. 
Somebody says, put on a costume and come to our Christmas party. There's going to be drinking. You say, that's pagan, and I'm not interested. I don't want to hear anything about that. That's wrong. It's wicked. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to regret it. I think now is the time to preach Jesus. Sure, it's not His birthday. We don't have to be ignorant of that or pretend like it is. Again, not all Christmas is pagan. Here's my conclusion. We can be okay with people doing secular things. We should never be okay with pagan things. We don't have to Christianize everything about the world. Well, I only live in a house because uh, in my father's house there are many mansions. So I, I only live in a house because of you know, John 14. Okay, come on, buddy. You just need a roof over your head. You see, you see what I'm saying? But we have a tendency to do that sometimes, or we want to try to force it into a spiritual box when not all things are spiritual. Some things are simply cultural or social or ultimately secular. It's secular. Let's read a few verses in Romans 14. Look at verse number 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. So if you said, I'm Christian and I don't have a tree, but my friend is secular, he's just a weaker brother, I'm going to argue with him. Well, verse 1 would con confront that and say, no, don't go to these doubtful disputations. Just, it's okay. Verse 2, for one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. You understand what he's saying? God's judging. And if there is somebody that really is saved, and they're okay with the pagan debauchery aspect of Christmas time, well, God's going to judge that. You understand what I'm saying? God will take care of the judgment there. Look at verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. There's nothing wrong with persuading somebody to understand the truth and the origins as long as it doesn't turn into doubtful disputations. Argument over something that isn't really certain. Uh, for instance, there's a thing on the internet that says Christmas was once outlawed in America about 300 years ago. There seems to be some evidence of that in certain states that what it wasn't called Christmas at that time, but the Yuletime pagan festival in the Grove was definitely outlawed in America. Other people see it on the internet and they say it must be true, therefore it's, it should be illegal today. That's kind of a doubtful dispute. I can't go back and prove that one way or the other. It seems that history is mixed on that, and there's not really, it's kind of silent on it. So let's not get into a doubtful disputation, right? Verse 6, He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord doth he not regard it. That's so key. What do we want to do? Let's regard every day unto the Lord. And if you say, anytime my family gets together, we're going to pray together. We're going to thank Jesus for what He's given us this year. We're going to ask Him for more next year. We're going to thank Him for our health and ask Him for help. I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, I would say you're kind of in the wrong. If it, Let's say somebody invited you to a July 4th get-together. There's no drinking or anything pagan, but it's just a get-together, and you start condemning them because... July the 4th is American history, and you're only biblical history. You know, you're holier than thou. I think Ecclesiastes would speak on that when it says to be not righteous over much. Sometimes we get puffed up by our knowledge, and we're ready to judge our brother, and we answer a fool according to their folly and become like unto them. We become a fool because we're just too focused on the wrong thing. This is the time of the year to honor the Lord in all of our words, and if you cross paths with somebody and they have a Santa hat on and they have an elf t-shirt on, you know what you should do? You should bless them in the name of the Lord and preach the gospel to them and just tell them how great Jesus is. And you might find that some people say, yeah, you're, yeah amen. Some people are confused because they've let the TV dictate what's right and wrong. I want to let the Bible dictate what's right and wrong. And it says that we all need to be fully persuaded in our own mind. I've been in churches where they put Christmas trees all over the building. And I've been in churches where they'll preach against Christmas trees in the pulpit. My personal opinion is we don't need a Christmas tree in the building because it is somewhat of an ambiguous, pseudo-religious symbol that's not directly related to the Lord Jesus Christ. A cross represents Christ. 
A Bible represents Christ. A pulpit, we see it in the Bible as we stand at a wood pulpit and preach the Word. There are certain things that are clearly in the Bible. There are other things that are not clear at all, but not forbidden. And so it's okay to have some Christmas decorations. But what we, ought to, we have to be careful is not to just condemn everybody that's different than us. Rather, use the opportunity to teach them about the joy of Christ. He gives us true joy. While we're in this chapter, look at verse 14. He says, For I know and am persuaded that by the Lord Jesus Christ there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. What it's talking about is you have your own conscience, you have your own law in your heart, and if I feel guilty about having a certain thing, and I feel that's a righteous thing, then I just need to stay away from it for my own conscience sake. If you would go to Jeremiah chapter 10. If you would go to Jeremiah chapter 10. I mentioned it recently in a sermon. I came across this guy, and we were talking about certain things, and uh, right away he started talking about, Jeremiah 10 preaches against the Christmas tree. And then we talked, what was it? There was something else he um, what was it? There was another secular thing he brought up, pagan thing, and I, I connected dots with him on that. And then, I, where do you go to church? Where do you go to church? Oh, you go over there to a church of God. I, and, and then it got into, oh, you're a Baptist? I can't believe a Baptist knows this kind of stuff, you know, about the conspiracies and all that kind of stuff. And, well, the Bible uses the word conspiracy many times. But he said, well, Jeremiah 10 says there's no Christmas tree. That's not what Jeremiah 10 says. And I said, and besides, you teach that you have to be good to be saved, you have to work your way into heaven. And he says, well, and, well, faith without works is dead. You know what I mean? It's one of these, like, let me just throw a verse. And it's like, so you're showing me that you're trusting in your own works to get to heaven. And he's the one I gave the example recently where he said, well, if, if I were sleeping around drunk and, you know, I died at that moment, you think God's going to let me into heaven? Showing that he's trusting in his works. There are many people that are out of balance on this, and they want to narrow in, they want to strain at a gnat as the Pharisees did. And I just want to make sure that you're in balance as a Christian, and that you don't feel under the bondage of anything. Because you know what happens when we begin to hate something, we give it power over us. There are things about Christmas I do hate, and that's greed, corruption, and I don't want to be under that bondage. I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to trust Him to provide, but I don't want to become under the bondage that every time I drive down the road, it's like, oh, they've got lights. Oh, they've got a tree. Oh, they've got a reindeer. Oh, there's an elf. Oh, there's a Santa. Oh, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with all that. Even the star itself, many people will say, well, that was the star of Bethlehem. Is it? Kind of. My wife put a star out in our yard. I'm telling ourselves. She looks at it like it's the star that announced Jesus' birth. There's nothing wrong with that. In Jeremiah 10, this is often taken out of context. I want you to see what the Bible says instead of listening to what people say. Look at verse uh, 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. That's it. That's a Christmas tree. You guys see that? They cut a tree. They deck it with silver and gold. It's fastened. It doesn't move. Clearly, that's a Christmas tree. If you stop right there, and you take it out of context, you might come up with that conclusion. Continue reading. Verse 5. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Now he's talking about this tree saying it's standing up, but it's not speaking. Think about it. They must needs be born. They have to be carried because they cannot go. This tree can't walk on its own. It's not just a tree, folks. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is in them to do good. He's talking about an idol. They would cut a tree and carve it into the form of an animal or a human or an angel allegedly or something else, call it a god, and they would wrap it in silver and gold and garnish it and decorate it and say, this is our god. And he says, well, they can't speak and they can't walk on their own. You have to carry it. Is that really your God? Look at verse 10. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting King. 
At his wrath the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to bide his indignation. One day God's going to pour out his wrath, and they won't be able to stand. Verse 11, Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens. These false idols will go away one day. Verse 12, He hath made the earth by His power, He hath established the world by His wisdom, He hath stretched out the heavens by His discretion. When He uttereth His voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heaven, and He causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of the treasures. Every man is brutish. Now verse 14, brutish means foolish or dumb, kind of the language we would use dumb, not as in mute, but as in like not very bright. What's he talking about? Well, the customs of the people are vain. It's a bunch of vanity to make a God and say, this is our God. It created us, but really they created it out of God's creation. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. There it is. A founder is something that molds something or makes something. He makes a graven image. For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity and the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. Jeremiah 10 is teaching us that the world makes idols because they believe in false gods, because they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. And when the world makes an idol, we don't have anything to fear. God alone is in charge. And those idols, one day He's going to scorch the earth and all the idols will be burnt up. So the world will carve an idol. This is not talking about a Christmas tree. To be honest with you, I don't know the true origins of the Christmas tree. I could tell you five different theories on it, and I cannot prove that either one of them is right. That's what you call doubtful disputations. I believe that at this time of the year is the best time of the year for us to preach the gospel and tell people how awesome God is. Now is the time of the year to be okay if the world has a secular tradition. Be okay with that. Never be okay with the falsehood of false gods and idolatry and paganism and debauchery and uh, the abominations of abortion that these, many of these cultures used to do. We want nothing to do with that. Just like with Halloween where they would do sacrifices and horrible things to people. Ungodly, not interested. But when the world is just being secular by tradition, I ask you, if you have a tradition, why do you have that tradition? Well, I guess because we've always kind of done it. I use the example of a, <laughs> the lady that was teaching her daughter how to bake a turkey for Thanksgiving. And she cut off the legs to the turkey. And the daughter said, Mom, why do we do that? And she says, well, that's what my mom used to do. Well, why did your mom do it? I don't know. Let's call her. So they called her and she said, well, I don't know. That's what grandma used to do. Well, why? Well, let's call grandma and find out. And they called grandma and said, Grandma, why did, you, why did we always cut the feet off of our turkey for Thanksgiving? She says, because I got a small oven. <laughs> Sometimes we just do stuff because that's what we've always done. It doesn't inherently make it wrong or right. There are some things wrong with the Christmas time of the year. I'll give you that. Don't embrace what's wrong and evil. But for Christ's sake, let's preach the gospel to those that are out there just having a family tradition. Let's not be an offense to them and let's not cause them to stumble at Christ because they have a different tradition. Don't embrace paganism. But we don't have to condemn all the things that are secular. Now is the time of the year that we can help people the most by having a sweet spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and encouraging people to search for the Lord. I hope this makes sense. I hope it's a blessing to you. Listen, I really believe that true joy only comes from Jesus. It really does. And there's nothing wrong with having some joy this time of year. For me personally, this is the time of the year I start thinking about next year more than anything else. Don't get disappointed at Christmas Day if you don't get what you want. So don't get your hopes up for Christmas Day. There's nothing really special or magical about it except for whatever tradition you may have. 
If it is magical, that would be pagan, and we don't do that. So anyway, I hope this is a blessing to you. I just hope it's something that will help you consider. Um, there's nothing wrong with celebrating Christmas so long as you're not offending the Bible. But don't offend your brother if they're different than you. Rather, use it to teach them about the truth that Jesus is God. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word, and thank you for the freedom that you've given us. And Lord, thank you for the opportunity to search out and to find the truth. And I do pray that you would help us to become more aware of the origins of certain traditions we have. Lord, I pray that you would help us to make sure that every tradition we have is to honor you and to glorify you. Lord, I pray that this year as we sing songs to you and we're going to worship you and we're going to um, uh, plan on having a, a big event to bring people in to tell them about your salvation, I pray that you would just give us the right attitude this time of year. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.